It's time to do the Matilda Desert Canter Camouflage. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz. Now today we're going to look at how we get from a basic built model to this, a painted model with the British three-tone desert camo known as Canto Camouflage. Now this is my first ever real modelling video so there's going to be a lot of problems, I know that. But anyway, how do we start? Well, we start with this, Mr. Mahogany Surfacer, thinned with Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner. Now the reason we use this surfacer rather than the black or the white or the grey is because we're going to be doing a desert camo which is a sandy camo and this one is not going to be as harsh and it's going to give us a little bit of pre-shading whereas I think the black is just too black so we just base the model literally just throw the th uh, surfacer all over the model this is just the undercoat to be fair and as you can see we're just going to literally apply it liberally and once we've done that, we can turn to our camo colours. I'm using this from the AK range, which is a lacquer based paint similar to the Tamiya paint. These are the colours. Now you'll notice there's no blue, which is the one that everybody thinks is the right colour, but it's actually not. It's museum's got it wrong. So these are the proper colours that we're going to use. So we're going to start off with the darkest of the yellow, heavily thinned, and this will be our base coat for the entire tank. This time I'm going to use, again, Mr. Leveling Thinner, and I'm just going to apply it liberally in quite opaque passes. I, I do about two coats on this one. And we're just spraying it evenly on the model to get some good coverage. As I said, this is the base coat, and it's pretty thin, so you're going to get some of that brown undercoat shining through ever so slightly. And that's what we're after that's the look we're looking for it gives a little depth and some fake shadow basically as you can see here at this stage no need to rush just apply it in even amounts all across the model i can't remember what the airbrush settings were here it was about 1.2 i believe psi so it just gives a nice smooth flow of the paint from ak which is a very nice paint as long as you thin it well you've really got to thin it properly. If you thin it not enough, then it clogs the airbrush. If you thin it too much, then you just get a load of bleh coming out of the end of it. But if you thin it just right like this, it goes on beautifully and it's a lovely colour. Once we've finished, we're going to keep this paint, but we're going to add a couple of drops of Tamiya White. That's going to give it, it's going to tone it down, make it a bit lighter. That'll give us our highlight tone. It's not modulation, but same, same. The thing is, if you like me, don't forget, do the underside of the tank as well, because you just never know who might be looking. I don't do show tanks or anything like that, and I don't have a mirrored turntable like some modelers, but I still do it nevertheless. Why? Because it's good to practice on, funnily enough. That's what I treat it as. It's your practice zone. And when you've done your model and you've stuck it on your base or whatever, no one's really going to see the amount of practice that you've put in. So it's a good thing to get into the habit of doing and obviously don't forget to do the turret because hey it's the same process so nothing changes now before we get onto the lighting it i'm going to use this shader just to give some more depth now this shader is a product by mig by ammo or ammo by mig and it's a very 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 thin acrylic type paste paint however it takes approximately 24 hours to dry and you can't really place any more paint on top of it until it does dry. You can get around that, however, by putting a good dose of matte uh, varnish over the top, and that will seal it in. The idea behind this, again, this is post-shading. We're just getting into those cracks and, de and crevices with this shader, just to give it a bit more depth when we go over it with the next tone. It sort of saves time. A lot of this will be hidden with the paint in any event and it won't really come back into play until we start weathering the tank. Okay, with the shading now done, we can go back to our initial base coat, drop a couple of uh, drops of white paint in there and now we can start lightening up ever so slightly. Now it looks pretty harsh here, but it does actually feather out. What I'm doing just a cloudy pattern in a very, very heavily thinned uh, paint just to give it that worn, faded look. 
This is not a replacement to actually trying to do fading, but it just gives it that little bit of depth and a bit of faded, bit of a faded look. That's all it is. Now you don't need to do this. I just like doing it because it's not modulation. It's very difficult. I, I, I find color modulation annoying to do, but it's a similar sort of process to modulation. It's, it's giving more tone to the paint scheme overall. Okay, with the base coat done and the feathering done to give it a little bit of depth and light, we now move on to camouflage. Now, first, before we start that, we have to mask off the areas that obviously we don't want to. Now, this is a three-tone, and at the moment, I've only masked it to give a two-tone. There's method to my madness, as we'll see later. And unfortunately, you can see the, uh, the stowage on the side broke, unfortunately, when I was hand-handling it. So we're going to take the next tone. This is the blue that you generally see. It's actually not a blue. It's a slate grayish color or a slate green or a slate desert color. I don't know what it is. It's called slate. And again, we're just going to do the same thing straight from the bottle. We're going to apply it. And then after we've applied it to those areas that we want the camouflage done, we're then just going to add a couple of drops of white paint yet again. And we're going to lighten it up. So the idea is to get into every single nook and cranny that we can possibly get into. Now, one of the tricks I found when using masks is don't spray directly on to where the line is. Sort of spray obliquely across it. That way you don't get so much of a feathered edge. This is me now applying the lighter tone. We'd already done the base for this camouflage color. Now we've dropped a couple of white in there and we're doing the lighter tone of that camouflage color. And as you can see, we're just Feathering and a cloudy pattern in the paint. Again, it's 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 diluted quite a lot with Tamiya lacquer thinner this time. This time the retarder type. So once we finish with that, we move on to the final paint. So we just add some more masks. This time to cover the dark green camouflage color. And again, we're just applying it straight from the bottle. Heavily thinned. It's about fifty percent thinner. And we're just going to take our time. We're not going to play it on. We've, we've dropped the pressure and we've closed the nozzle on the airbrush as much as possible, trying to make sure that we get some good coverage and we don't get too much feathering where those straight lines are, which is always a concern with masks. And just like the other two colors, we're then going to drop a couple of bits of white in there and feather that in to lighten it up. Unfortunately, I didn't take any video of that. And that's basically what we're looking for. So once you've laid all your colors down and taken your masks off, then you should be left with something like this. This is your three tone proper color camouflage for the British in the desert on the Matilda. And I was looking a little bit better than what it was when we did the first video when it was just a plastic tank. Now, clearly it's not finished. There's lots of weatherings to still be done. But the whole idea with this video was to just get those camouflage colors down. And you can see here how the, the colors are contrasted with that slight highlight. And you can still see some of the shader coming through, but it's not massive. All that is going to be overly emphasized in the weathering process when we do, when we do the pin washes and all the other stuff that comes up in the next parts of the videos. This one, we only just got it to uh, the basic stage. We've got the camo on, we put the decals on, we're ready to move to weathering. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. That's my first ever modeling video and I can see that there's a lot of teething issues that I need to iron out, but it's my first attempt. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not gonna be setting the world on fire with my modeling videos, I get that. But hey, you've gotta start somewhere and nothing ventured, nothing gained. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. And I promise, my camera work will get better as I move along and get used to doing this sort of stuff. Not bad for a guy who normally does videos on games. Anyway, until the next time, have a good one, guys. Bye for now.